Hi there and welcome to today's Wednesday webinar. I'm super excited because it's it's the most wonderful time of the year and yes it is Girl Scout cookie booth time. Super super happy about that. Um, love this time of year uh, because I loved doing cookie booths with with the girls and I love seeing girls out doing cookie booths you know now that I'm one of those older adults I of course am the one who goes up to them and says hi so what are you guys earning money for <laughs> and, um, and always am more inclined to buy boxes or make a donation to those troops that have an idea of what they're gonna do um, it's so funny because uh, when my girls were little I would find myself feeling like wow why are you quizzing these kids and <laughs> what are you doing but it's really such a gift to the girls to be able to process that kind of information I, I just love this time of year so um, so hey there hi oh I'm so glad we've got people who are logging in live today that's great because I'm gonna um, be tapping you for your ideas too as we go through it just it, it's so wonderful in the last couple of years we've gotten some great pictures uh, we've got from littles to bigs uh, look at oh, how cute are they and I am cold just looking at them, but look at how well they're dressed. And the bigs, nice, well-dressed, ready to go with a smile on, um, outdoors and in. I know that very place. If it's not the Walmart that I actually have done many, many booth sales at, it's one very similar to it. And these are the luckiest kids in the whole world. I'll bet you that's an, an Obishan. Um, maybe on chick day I find chick day a great day if you can get into your Obishan or your Paris Farmers Union on on chick day but which is not a sexist thing it's the day that the baby chicks come in it's terrific because people come out of the woodwork for that day um, even at the malls this year this is down at the main mall right there between um, Starbucks and over on this side is forever 21 and then at the Bangor mall I'm not familiar enough with the Bangor Mall to know which stores it's between, but it looks like it's a pretty central location because doesn't that look like it's the center of a place? And look at how beautiful those booths are. Um, in both places, we have Girl Scouts of Maine staff working it during the, the business day while girls are in school. But when girls aren't in school, we've got troops covering so uh, almost all of the time, um, including every Friday in March at the the uh, Portland Mall at the the uh, main mall um, because different school districts have Friday Fridays off during the month of March and so coincidentally it worked that every Friday is being covered by girls almost all day which is wonderful because our offices are closed on Fridays so <laughs> so it is nice if um, the girls can be there and they're representing um, everybody oops oh uh, wait, okay, so we have to go back because I worked hard on this slide. <laughs> I want you to see the great joy that it is. So everybody's doing it. We've got girls showing up in all different ways. I love seeing pictures of troops that I know and troops that I've known in the past and, and other troops as well. Look at all those girls out representing Girl Scouts and most importantly getting that opportunity to sell Girl Scout cookies, to represent a product, and to ask people if they will buy that product to support what they want to do. There are so many. Lots of neat things. Oh, are you going to do the trick? Oh, and it did the trick. Yay. So lots of girls out selling girls, Girl Scout cookies. And you notice there were adults in most of those pictures because, of course, we have to have two adults and at least three girls at a booth. Um, but the girls are, are doing the selling. The girls are right up there in front. So um, why in the world? Why in the world would we do all this? Uh, you know, every single picture I've looked at, I've been like a big old smile all day today as I've been um, pulling this webinar together because it just makes me so happy seeing younger girls working with older girls, um, seeing the girls having signage up and their cookies on display and this troop with pictures of their whole troop so if somebody comes when some aren't there they can see everybody and you see they've got zip lining going on and oh my goodness somebody went to, went to the top of Katahdin um, and pictures of summer camp and this poster that just says it all empower the girls and the largest girl-led business 
absolutely love it. And it does make this time of year a little hard sometimes because it does seem to be open season on Girl Scout bashing some years. This year it hasn't been as bad. And Chris Rock at the Oscars, oh my goodness, I enjoyed him so much already. But when he brought out the girls to sell Girl Scout cookies, you've got to love that. And what does it mean? What does it mean to be empowering girls with the largest girl-led business? Well, it's it's our Girl Scout leadership experience. Remember, we're here to, to build girls of courage, confidence, and character to make the world a better place. And that that's Juliet's goal 103 years ago, minus like one week. Um, and we do that because of the specific knowledge, skills, attitudes, behaviors, and values they develop in Girl Scouting through those girl-led learn by doing cooperative learning activities that help them discover, connect, and take action. And I love this slide. This is my favorite slide. People who see me frequently are super sick of this slide, I'm sure, but it's what we do. And, you know, I was thinking a couple weeks ago, somebody had said, oh, lots of adults don't know what the Girl Scout leadership experience is. And I thought, I don't know how that's possible because I feel like I'm saying it all of the time. Um, but to me, this is to adult Girl Scouts, well, it, it's more, it's an addition, like, um, you know, the girls learn the promise and the law as girls, and, and we try to work what we do with them to the promise and the law, and remind the girls when they're, when they're being uh, rough with each other, or not physically rough, but, but you know, verbally, emotionally, socially rough with each other, we remind them, you know, hey, is that being honest and fair or friendly and helpful? Um, for me, this is the add-on. When you bridge to adult or when you become an adult volunteer, you get the third leg of that, which is the Girl Scout leadership experience and the responsibility of helping make sure that that we're doing this, that we're, we're facilitating those girl-led, learn-by-doing cooperative learning experiences so that the girls can build this, the specific knowledge, skills, attitudes, behaviors, and values um, to build their courage, confidence, and character so they will continue to make the world a better place. And um, some folks I know get caught up. I was trying to find my cursor. Some folks get caught up on um, those processes. What is it to be cooperative? What is it to be learned by doing? And what is it to be girl-led? And so I started my little list. Um, but I do hope folks will, will chime in with some things. I mean, obviously, at a booth sale, girls are making the sales together. It's, you know, oh, Gag nabbit, um, go back. <laughs> um, I have to type on my my blackboard over here, not on the screen where I'm watching the video. I'm quick. Been doing this for a little while. So uh, girls are making the sales together, and we we want at least three girls, right, at a booth. How else do they cooperate? What else What else are they doing to cooperate with? Um, each other or other people at a booth sale or around cookie booths. Maybe uh, well, they're making choices about how to spend their money. That requires a lot of cooperation. I love you, Tori, because I was thinking the very same thing. <laughs> the, the making choices and setting goals ahead of time um, about how they'll spend their money. That's one of the most challenging pieces in, of the cooperation part. Isn't it? Um, and it's I, when people talk about cooperation and collaboration, a lot of us go to those science classes we had in high school where we were kind of thrown together with a bunch of people that we didn't know very well and told, your whole group's going to be graded on this one project. But we were never given the tools to learn how to work as a group. And so some people were really successful and other people weren't. Some people had the one kid who'd make it a great project and everybody else would benefit. And, um, but Girl Scouts, we have the time and the tools to help girls learn how to collaborate together to make choices about how they want to spend their money. And then um, the, the cookie sale, right, and coming right out of that on the Learn by Doing is, is the girls have the privilege to earn their own money. They're going to um, earn the money toward those choices. Um, and some folks look at me like I'm crazy when I say that's a privilege, but isn't it? You know, when you, it, it, it might not feel like it in the moment because it is certainly easier to say, hey, mom, I need 15 bucks to go see the IMAX movie. But after you've earned the money and you've gone and done the thing that cost however much it cost, it, there's such a sense of pride and 
yeah, I earned my way. I earned the money to take that trip or to go um, do that adventure or to um, even to go to the movie or to to uh, go. I don't, everything that is coming to me is a, a go to. But I earn the money for us to be able to make these cool crafts. I earn the money to make the blanket that I then donated to the Linus Project for um, kids who need blankets. So you know, there's such a privilege associated with that because of the pride that will be felt at the other end. What else? What are some other cooperative things? I, those of you who are here, other ways that girls cooperate around the uh, cookie booths and direct sales. Well, sale. running the booth. Yeah. Actually running the booth. So taking turns, collecting money, talking to the customers, passing out the cookies, setting up the cookies, all really important, especially when you're bringing out daisies and brownies who really like to be in charge of everything. <laughs> Oh, I don't know who you're talking about. <laughs> yeah, that the taking turns, so um, giving everybody a chance to take the lead, right? And helping the girls take the lead that don't want to take the lead, too. Right. The ones that don't want to talk to the customers, they're too shy to take the money, that sort of thing. Yeah, there is a little squishy in there. Um, we'll put the, the quotes in there. So in case somebody doesn't understand what I mean, your Girl Scout sisters. And it, I don't know if shire is a word, but um, <laughs> but yeah, that idea of um, uh, encouraging your, your sister Girl Scout to take the lead. You can do this. Um, and she gets to see by example, too. Isn't that a wonderful thing about cooperation? Not only... Um, having your friends encourage you, but being able to watch the others do it and go, oh, well, I see how she's doing it. And isn't it a great opportunity for us to, to be the bug in the ear who says, okay, see how she's doing it? What do you like about what she's doing? And what would you do a little differently? You know, so so it's, a, it's such a great teaching opportunity for us, a, a guiding opportunity for us or for other girls if they get it because like you could prompt one of the more confident um, girls or one of the girls who's quicker to take the lead to be the bug in the air for somebody else too. So she's learning her own new skill. And so that leads right into learn by doing there too, you know, encouraging um, peers to try new things. What else on the and an right? important part of cookies and all of the money earning badges is that um, we all handle cash a lot less now than we ever used to. Right. And having our young girls, especially, actually physically having money in their hands, buying the cookies, selling the cookies, giving change out, that's a pretty big um, accomplishment for them. Yeah, it really is. Yeah, it really is. Yeah, it's. Um, it's a fun thing to practice, too, because you're right. They, they don't have their hands on money very often. So it's such a real thing. Um, I love making the pitch. Um, I love watching kids make the pitch and see how they invite people to make the sale. And Heather, you just came on. You want to share your favorite pitch? Heather just got to work at the um, mall booth sale yesterday. I don't know. She's, she doesn't have her, Oh, there you are. Good. Hi. Can you hear me now? Yes. So one I was able to use yesterday at the mall was it's five for 20. Five boxes for $20. And a couple people added on. Yay. Well, because it's such, you, uh, 20 is such a nice round number. So $4 a box. But if you get five, it's only 20. <laughs> Which, if they if they do the math, they see it's not uh, they're not saving anything, but but it is nice and simple. I was telling Heather that one of the other women here said she gives it the extra little boost of um, it's well it's four dollars a box, but for you you can get five for twenty. You know, just giving it that extra personal like that person's getting the good guy discount, even though again it's the same price. So um, learning how to how to make a sale. <laughs> Uh, 
Um, isn't there also that thing of um, identifying what's appealing to people? You know, because yep. if even just looking at some of the pictures that went by way too fast, it felt like they were going to take a long time on that other slide. But um, some of them have tablecloths, some don't have tablecloths. Some of them have signs, some don't have any signs. Some have um, costumes, some don't have costumes. Some are wearing their vests, some aren't wearing their vests. Um, you know, the, the ones where their little fingers are all blue and their noses are blue and their toes are blue, um, and those, those are a problem. <laughs> I, there weren't any pictures of those. But, you know, there's sometimes you get out there and it's really cold. Um, and so having the girls take some time to think about it ahead of time is also part of the learn by doing because magic doesn't just happen. Magic gets planned and rehearsed and, and talked about and tweaked a little and reevaluated. And that learn by doing of uh, preparing for it. Um, it it's, it's something that certainly grown-ups tend to do most of the preparing for it when the girls are little. But after they've done it once, you can do that. Okay, what went really well? And what are we going to do differently at our next one? Which is why I always like to do um, two or three in a season. Because if you do it just once and things go badly, either the weather's really poor or um, people argued or the, you ran out of Thin Mints too fast and you ended up having the case of um, cranberry crisps get opened and nobody bought it here, you know, things that don't make your heart sing. Um, it's nice to be able to try again and have uh, the opportunity to build on your learning from the first one. So that, that preparing for it and bringing the girls in on that, um, at least after they've done the first one. And that girl led, you know, they're actually making the sales. And sometimes the grown-ups are, are talking with their eyes, doing a telegraph thing with their eyes to the grown-ups on the other side of the table. But the girls are the ones making the words happen and looking the grown-ups in the eye and saying, what was your favorite flavor of Girl Scout cookie? And how many boxes of that can I give you? And, oh, you can't have sugar of that? That's a shame. Would you like to donate to our local food pantry? Um, or if you're taking donations. Or, um, you know, they make great gifts. <laughs> can they freeze well? <laughs> um, that, I like the thanks a lot as a hostess gift, and that's one that I always buy myself to, so I can take it to people's house when I go over. Um, but coming up with those sales techniques, at the, and the girls come up with them. They don't take Miss Dawn's or, or somebody else, some other grown-up's techniques only. They find them and they make them their own and make decisions about it. And the girl-led part goes back to the cooperative part where making choices about where their money's going to go. Oh, goodness, I hate it when my fonts don't match. Um, tell me some mm -hmm. other things. What are some other ways that we see girl-led in booths? Well, the goal setting overall, because it includes them deciding how much money they need to earn and how many booths they're going to need to have in order to earn that money, what their goals are, how many they want to sell. Right. I'm sorry. Say it again. The, the goal setting, um, how many booths they're going to need. Yeah. How many boxes they need to sell in order to accomplish their goals. Right. I don't know if you can hear my mad typing uh, to, let's say, neat because it's shorter. Absolutely. Um, and bringing the girls in on that thinking that um, making decisions. and Because doesn't that also give them the option to say, hmm, you know, that's a lot of boxes. Maybe instead of doing that goal, we'll do that goal this year, we'll do it next year to give us a little more time to earn that amount of money if they're way off. Or if they see that it's really close, wow, if we can do that, maybe we can also do this other goal and we just have, you know, that extra boost sale. Um, bringing them in on the decision making. It's so huge. How many kids get to make decisions about money in their households? Um, you know, maybe they get an allowance, but maybe they don't. And, and here's such a great opportunity for them to, again, they've got the tools and they've got the support, somebody who can facilitate it. And for the grown-ups, if you're thinking, oh, I don't want to facilitate money decisions, it's not something I'm comfortable around, 
you know what, the financial literacy badges that we have in the Girl Guide to Girl Scouting, they are terrific. They are very good about being um, age level appropriate. Um, and I was thinking that before, but I put together some stuff around financial literacy last spring and so did some research on a couple of government websites that look at financial literacy for kids. And we were spot on with all of the recommendations I found at each site, which you know, makes my heart sing as a Girl Scout in general, um, as a Girl Scout adult, but it, it makes my heart sing as a parent and as a person who cares about kids and who cares about education and meeting kids where they are and helping them to grow. Um, so if you haven't looked at the financial literacy badges or the cookie business badges, open it up and give it a look. And if you find yourself stuck on something, if you think, oh, this, I'm, I'm not confident around this, call some other leaders or go on the volunteer swap and ask some questions. Maybe you can buddy up with another troop and do some things together in your service unit, or maybe you can find a buddy troop on the uh, GSME volunteer swap to share some ideas because it's great stuff. And I've got to tell you, I've gotten better about financial literacy as a Girl Scout adult than I was before I joined this milieu. So um, it, it's, it's stuff that benefits all of us, and that's uh, it ends up being fun because it's done in this wonderful troop environment with a bunch of fun kids and other fun adults. So, so that's my thinking on that. Are, any other thoughts about cooperative or learn by doing or girl-led ideas um, that we can stick in here? Okay, if you think of other things, post them on the volunteer swap with because I'll post this recording today. Um, some things to remember. Definitely, um, when you want to set up a booth, talk to the places you go. You know, go to the businesses that you're familiar with or to places owned by people you know. Um, and then show your personality while still being respectful of the business and representing Girl Scouts. You know, we don't we don't need to be sullen and um, for some reason I pictured Jane Eyre's school. Uh, we don't need to be sullen and stiff when we're there and we want to be respectful of the business and remember that we're representing Girl Scouts when we're out there. You definitely want to dress for the weather and um, one of one of our volunteers in the uh, Brunswick area, my good friend Dawn Grimes, she tells kids dress like you're going to be out in the snow for four hours because you will be. Um, so these girls are well dressed, and it doesn't look like it's a super super cold day, but they've all got their hats and they've got gloves. A couple of them who don't have gloves, look at how pink their little fingers are, and they've got their boots and snow pants and coats. They're ready to go, and then they're doing a little movement to keep it going. It looks like maybe they're doing. Um, what do you think, Princess Pat? Some or maybe the pirate song over the founding sea. Um, you want to create a customer friendly environment. So I, I love they made these signs. Um, just the other day on the GSME volunteer swap, Michelle Josephson posted a picture of signs that she had made. She used hula hoops and felt. And I thought that was great because a hula hoop would be easier to hold on to in some ways than just cardboard because you can kind of grip into it. Um, and if you've got a place to store them, they will last nicely. Look at these guys. They've even posted where they're planning to go, what their goal is. They've made a nice display. They've got their cash box ready to go. And um, they're at, even at the fire station, so they're right in their community. So lots of good things. They've got a cart. I'm just noticing all these, these extra little things. I like how their cookies all have smiles or sweet faces on. Um, and work as a team. Work together to make it happen. I'm taking turns at who's wearing the costume, who's taking care of the money box, who's helping people pack up their cookie boxes to take with them. These guys also, they've got their their goals, where they're going to go, raising money for a campery trip to Hershey Park, Pennsylvania. How fun. Um, and then you can also invite others to join the fun, to join Girl Scouts if they text G-S-J-O-I-N, G-S-Join. Um, to 69979 and it, they'll get more information about how to join Girl Scouts. 
something that somebody reminded me just before we started uh, this morning, this afternoon, this afternoon, um, was to remind folks not to put out a tip jar. Now, if somebody buys a $4 box of cookies and they hand the girl a $5 bill and say, keep the change, absolutely, the girls can accept that tip. Absolutely. But if you put out a tip jar, then you're actually asking for donations. You're asking for money. And we don't do that. Girl Scouts don't ask for money. We don't solicit cash. Um, so don't put out a tip jar. If people offer you donations, of course you can accept it. There was a wonderful story I posted on the Volunteer Swap a couple days ago about a girl who had a man come up to her and give her a hundred dollar bill and say give away the next 25 boxes of cookies how cool is that that's such a nice thing and so you know the girl had the not only the opportunity but also the responsibility to hand out the next 25 boxes of cookies to people and you know that's that's a nice story um, and a neat experience for her and I, the last customer that she gave the 25th box of cookies to um, was a little boy and he had one dollar with him and he gave her his dollar because he thought that was so nice he wanted to pay it forward so you know cool opportunities come up during the Girl Scout cookie booth sale and um, you you volunteers are the people who make it happen because of course, you've got to have the three girls, but you've got to have the two adults. You've got to have the at, the at least two adults who are going to be behind the girls to help make sure that the booth gets set up, that the um, cookies are available. Because remember, you, you do have to get your information into your local cupboard early enough that the cupboard keeper will be able to get cookies to set you up. Um, and you've got to get them to the site you've got to have some kind of a table and some kind of a money box system and you have to help the girls organize that plan and so without the grown-ups it certainly doesn't happen without the girls of course it doesn't happen but all of these parts all of these puzzle pieces are so key to making Girl Scout cookie booths the rich and wonderful empowering opportunity they are for girls oh here I've got We've got in the chat. Wow, what a nice way to allow some kind of absolutely, um, absolutely, Heather. I don't know if y'all can see it in the chat. Heather po pointed out that it's um, a nice way to allow some kindness. We've got to ask people to take the opportunity to help girls by buying cookies. And isn't that the case? One of my friends used to say, um, hey, how would you like to buy a box of cookies? Because what you're doing is you're making a donation of $4 to Girl Scouts and you get a box of cookies. You're, you're putting your money toward girls becoming, uh, girls building their courage, confidence, and character to make the world a better place. Um, and you get a box of cookies. And it, it's, it is a wonderful allow some kindness opportunity, ask opportunity. Absolutely. Does anybody else have any other thoughts, questions, ideas about cookie booths? and the direct sales season. Any of you here? If any of you who are listening after the fact have some thoughts, ideas, pictures you want to share, ideas you want to share, um, questions you have, please do post them on the, the GSME Volunteer Swap or if you're watching this on the YouTube channel in the comment section of the YouTube channel because absolutely um, we want to know, we want to share those ideas. Uh, we're not, Girl Scouts are not competing against each other. We are all in this together to earn as much money and um, for troops to be able to do those things that they want to do to reach those goals that they've set for themselves. So, And really, it's also the biggest PR time of the year for Girl Scouts. This is when people see us and see that we are alive and thriving and providing wonderful opportunities for girls in our community. So. So yay you and yay us and um, I know I'm stocking up Thin Mints for my freezer because in August they taste remarkably good um, frozen and fresh ice cream. So we'll talk to you soon. See you next Wednesday. Bye.